Be with the pledge of our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You're welcome, all. Approval of the bills. We've all had a chance to look over the bills of the evening. Is there a motion to accept the data bill of the evening? I'll make a motion to accept. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Approval of the January 10th, 2024 meeting minutes. A motion to accept. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? I abstain. Okay. Mayor's report. I uh, right before I came down here tonight, I received a call from Eric Weiss, our uh, engineer, and he informed me that our grant for the uh, substation did not go through on this round. It didn't score enough points. They're going to uh, assess why it didn't score enough points and then resubmit for the next round to see if uh, you know we get awarded that uh, the grant. You know, it's a huge grant for us if we can get it to uh, offset the cost of our substation upgrade. So we've got to keep our fingers crossed and hope that uh, we can uh, acquire that grant. Uh, the GoArt Community Arts Grant, uh, we were awarded that grant for $2,300. And we've lined up three uh, concerts in the park now. The dates have been set June 20th. July 27th and August 19th. All those concerts will be held in Hickory Park. And uh, we'll promote it and uh, hopefully have a good crowd there for the uh, residents of the village to enjoy. And we're waiting on the Summer Rec Program grant uh, that was submitted. So we haven't heard back on that yet. So we can wait notification of that. We're still awaiting our uh, lease for Norterra. I called them and he advised me that he thought we would have an answer by next month. So we're waiting on that. Uh, we uh, met with the Tree and Park Committee here on Wednesday, February 7th, and we discussed uh, what had been done at the park, what uh, plans are for the ensuing year and uh, all the dates that the uh, park is uh, going to be utilized for all the various events uh, not only with the village events but also the BBCA uh, we discussed that uh, PLM we did uh, receive a, the bid package for the transformers for the substation with its specifications and we're going to be sending those out to vendors for uh, competitive bidding to see what the uh, prices come back at. Attended the uh, Virgin Business and Civic meeting they held on January 22nd. Uh, Lauren Humphrey from the Genesee County Travel Guide was there and uh, <clears throat> gave a nice presentation. And uh, they asked that we uh, participate in their uh, flyer that they put out their little catalog of events for the county. Uh, typically the BBCA would go around and acquire uh, all the vendors around here to, to, uh, for their ads to offset the total cost but because of the time frame that was involved they asked that the village uh, and the town each uh, take on one third of the cost along with them so we agreed to do that. So that'll list all the events pretty much for the, uh, the town and the village and BBCA. And that goes out to uh, like 60,000 people, you know, residents yeah. of the county and That's all right. over and uh, as well as here in the, in the Virgin area. 
I did uh, put a blurb in here about the dog feces. You know, I walk, I walk our dogs a lot in the village, and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of dog feces all over. It. And I'm just asking the people, please pick up after your your pets. Yeah, it's a you mess. know, it is a mess, and it's uh, it's not safe. And uh, I, I'm asking them to be responsible pet owners and uh, clean up after their pets. I mean, we have dog stations here and there with bags. People mm -hmm. can get them, and so I, I really well, I do. I do see the bags being used, but I think it's a 50-50. There's half the people are doing it, and half of them aren't. Yeah. Because there's every yard you walk by, there's a yeah. pile of poop in it. Yeah. So all we can do is yep. try to promote hey, take care of your responsible pet owner. <clears throat> uh, I attended the Genesee County Hazard Mitigation Plan that was on February 7th in Batavia. And there's a uh, company called Tetra Tech who's going to be overseeing an update for the county for a uh, total mitigation plan for the whole county. And they're going to be in contact with all the municipalities in the county to assess, uh, you know, any mitigation problems that we might foresee. Uh, I mean, the, the big one here that I think of is uh, a train derailment right here with all these trains going through here if something was to happen. So th they will be in contact with us and uh, we, we can uh, assess, you know, what we feel are the uh, areas that need to be addressed. Uh, the warm weather, the DPW guys have gotten a good jump on the park, cleaning up. Uh, we took advantage of the spring like weather we had, so we got a good head start on that. Other than that, uh, a lot of routine maintenance of the equipment. Uh, the sewer, we're still awaiting EFC approval for the uh, wastewater manhole rehabilitation. Uh, they're pretty much done with the uh, lift stations the upgrade of all the equipment in those and the controls and the uh, natural gas generator is up and running now at our main lift station on Gibson Place. So that's all in place. Uh, we're still waiting for the funding though so they can start uh, addressing the, the manhole, the infiltration to get that under control. So other than that, that's what I've got. Courtney? Um, just a couple things I'll point out from my report. Um, got a couple important dates coming up. Uh, Friday is the bid opening for uh, septic cleaning, uh, pump, uh, pumping, and March 1st is a refuse, uh, which was, uh, will be the big one. Um, and also May 9th is uh, that the day we selected for uh, Community Action Day with the 10th being rain date. So I talked to the new principal of the school, uh, and uh, so the seventh graders will be coming May 9th. How many vendors do we have that submitted bids for the trash bin? Um, I haven't received any yet, ah. which is not unusual. Uh, usually they will day be of. the day of, or, <laughs> or so some do send it a, a little early, but uh, a lot of them will come and hand it in and then go to Gregory's and come and back. And wait. Exactly. Yeah, they don't want any uh, chances of their bid being used or whatnot. So, yeah, it's rare for us to get any too much ahead of time. Courtney, I had a question from a resident about owner responsibility for the totes, the small totes. A mm -hmm. um, couple blew away, those kinds of things. Is it the, is, I told them to call waste management, but is it, how does that work, do you know? Yes, um, so we used to have a, a bunch here, so if it blew away or they broke, and they do break easily because the guys just throw them, <laughs> yeah. um, so they get broken all the time, and so we had a, uh, quite a stack, uh, but they're gone now, and because it's getting so close to the time, yeah. um, uh, they don't want to bring us any, okay. and they've transitioned over from the, the, the bins to small totes. So they, the Casella who does it now, um, they uh, called the other day and said that their bid is going to include uh, toters, small toters for recyclables instead of the bins. Okay. So, so if you look around the village, uh, there's a few spots of people who've called Casella directly, they and them. they have them already. Okay. Are they free to the residents? Yes. Un okay. 
That's, I guess that was the main question. Yeah. So I, I'm looking forward to it if, if they win the bid for everybody to have a nice recyclable toter. Um, it'll make things look better mm -hmm. and it'll stop things from blowing all right. over town. Right, okay, thank you. Yeah. We do get a lot of stuff blowing around. It always, mm -hmm. It's always windy for somehow. Right. what I want to highlight, but okay. I'm sure everybody read my report. Okay, everyone's got Gary's CEO report. Not a whole lot going on this time of year. Things are looking better up at the corner. 1933, you know. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, 83 South Lake is starting to look a lot better. Yeah. So. Yeah. Apartments are going in there. And, yeah. So. Any questions on any of the reports? If not, I'll entertain a motion. We'll accept them. I'll make a motion to accept the reports. A second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Trustee concerns? Paul? No. Todd? I hope that you covered the, the dog feces issue, so okay. hopefully everybody takes heed to that. I'll uh, throw it in my next monthly newsletter also, just to strengthen it, you know, and reach as many residents as we can with it. Mike, you got it? I, I apologize, I didn't notice, but there were two poles out here without lamps on top. They've been fixed. Um, they've been fixed. Yeah, okay. that, was, that was a couple weeks ago I noticed, and then yeah. I just haven't looked since. I haven't out at night. The so. uh, LED drivers have right. failed, so right. we had to ship them out, get them repaired. And okay. we have them, they are now back in service, and we've got, I think, one or two spare units in the house now. Perfect. So oh, there's one thing. I'm in front of the old dilapidated house there on South Lake. Uh, village planted a tree in the parkway a year or two ago. Uh, one of the green posts, somebody pulled out of the ground and just laying next to the tree. Okay. All right. Corey, you'll let the guy in for it. Okay. All right. On to new business. Uh, licensing agreement, property encroachment. Uh, kind of ties in with this map we all have. Bob, have you got a copy of this map? No. How did you pick a packet of uh, with information from the back? Uh, back yeah, it should be it. There's a the, whole, to the right of okay. the packet there, and okay. it should have a, a map in there for you. Um, so the licensing agreement, um, if you look at the, the map, Across the street from the blue, you have do you have one? I don't, but I know which one you're talking about—the meter building. Yeah. So across the street from the blue triangle, mm -hmm. uh, those two parcels are being sold. And if you look at uh, towards our substation, um, part of the fence and the control building are um, encroaching on the other property. So this agreement is a simple agreement that says it's okay, and, and if uh, we have a rebuild, then we'll rebuild it elsewhere. So it's, it's just a, uh, something for their closing. Somebody planning on building on that lot? No, um, it's all swamp. Oh, yeah. So no, yeah, nobody can print, uh, nobody can really do anything with it, but um, but it's being sold, and uh, one of the one of the tenants has purchased. It's only been like that for 60 or 70 years, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Does the red designate the village on that? Which yes. Is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, so, the, um, <clears throat> so the next uh, thing on the agenda will address my uh, conversation about the blue. Okay. So we, uh, you yeah, well, we have to. Passes. Pass this license agreement. 
uh, which I'm glad you know the owner of the property is willing to do this for us. Oh, is there still metering equipment in that? Yes. Yeah. Still our control house for that substation. Yeah, that'd be expensive move. Very expensive, yes. Uh, so I'll, is there a motion to accept this license agreement? I'll make a motion to accept the license agreement as written. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, the second part of this now is, as Corby said, they're, the owner's looking to sell off some of these prop, this property. And this section in blue is it's right next to our... It's not ours, right? It's not ours. Yeah. And he's willing to sell it, but he's going to want, I believe, well over what it's assessed for. Right now, he's just using it. He, he's got a trailer. He parks on it. So uh, he does use it here and there. But he, I, he, I believe he'd be, he is willing to sell sell the property. But uh, maybe you can elaborate, Courtney, what he told you. Yeah. Um, to me, it would be a smart move to buy this property. As you can see, as you, uh, if we didn't have that property, um, all we have is a right of way, the roadway uh, to our property, um, that turnaround spot where we push snow um, and where the, the plow turns around. Uh, we don't own any of that. <coughs> Theoretically, something could come along and fence it all up, and there's nothing we can do about it on both sides. Um, but it connects all our parcels, um, and it just gives us a little bit more room and, and uh, ownership of uh, that street between lift station which is the uh, smaller triangle and the, and the um, substation and you know it's available now so, it, it, it so the event, initially uh, I talked to him about it um, I suggested um, a price uh, that we you know and he said no for that amount it's, it's not worth it for me so he was thinking about just he has a landscaping business and he wants to parse his trip. Um, so it wasn't really worth it to him. Um, he said he for 5000 it's, it's assessed for 800 So it's, it's a matter of if they're interested in purchasing it, how much are we going to go up for it? Um, it's, it's, it's higher than assessed, but Five thousand dollars overall for something that we'll have in case we can have it for our best property. So if there's anything that we ever need to do in the future um, in this area, uh, we have that, that property in the end. Especially at the end there where we're pushing snow and we're trying to get the trucks around. Or you want one right here for those who need to choose to do this. It will come out of the general fund. Do you know the size by any chance? Um, well, that off the top of my head, I... I just wanted to help that access point of how people can drive trucks through that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's big enough to... Yeah. It's, it's like yeah. double the road. You know, yeah, it's like double. It would be like tripling the road, so we'd have a lot of access. That, that graves kind of circle and is gravel. Mm -hmm. So what's the process in Is it just possible? Um, so if the board approves the purchase, uh, then we get a, a, an offer put in and then acceptance and it goes through the very closing process. We would present it to the resident. We would, yeah. yeah. And you have to buy a land and be like a, yeah, almost like the local law that you get from a public hearing. I'm okay with 
this gives you right on the property line. Right. Well, it gives us future building buildings in that whole. You know, it's all wooded area there now. Yeah. It's all yeah. trees. Yeah. 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 We need a crane in there. Right. If you need something there, there's something. If you need something in there, then we can park something in there. When we start building that, that parcel, well, you know, also see where they are. General budget. Okay. Um, 
start with the general budget and uh, revenue. Um, real, real property taxes, there's no increase of the uh, property tax again this year. Pilot, the 58,000 is the uh, funds that the electric uh, fire tariff gives the general fund. Uh, real property tax interest and penalties, 2,000. Sales tax distribution by county, um, that is the, that 180,000, 451,88 is what they uh, allotted for us and the fixed amount and the calculation that they do, so that's a hard number. Franchise fees uh, kept in 13,500, it was a little less uh, last year, but the three year average is usually around 13,500, so leave that. Clerk fees, uh, we don't really get a lot of clerk fees in. Um, I just left a little something in there, so it was a one zero. Uh, we don't charge for notaries, we, we don't charge for faxes, we don't charge for copies, uh, you know, like figure you know, taxpayers. You know, they're based taxes. I'm not going to nickel and dime them on um, to send a couple of faxes or not. if they want. They, and then we're not going to print books out for them if they want. No mass mailing. Right. right. Yeah. So uh, we kind of uh, charge for that. Uh, zoning fees, uh, you don't see uh, too much of that. Uh, just, again, just leave a little something in there. Same with uh, planning board fees. It is possible with the uh, different pro, uh, uh, projects going on this year, though that might go up a little bit. Uh, refuse and garbage fees, that is a big one, uh, but it's passed through. So when we get the bids coming in uh, on uh, March 1st, um, then we'll know what that amount is, but that uh, is a, 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 its own separate line on the tax bill. So it will, uh, what we pay what we receive in from that line will go in here, but you'll see uh, a place uh, uh, appropriations where it will go right back out to the hall. Uh, Intermunicipal uh, government that went up, uh, so that 7,500 was what the town pays us for uh, bookkeeping, um, and the uh, additional 3,750 is what the uh, library will be paying us to do uh, bookkeeping as well. So that 11,250 is um, uh, what our generates, uh, generates us from being able to do uh, the bookkeeping for. How long is you doing that for the library? Um, let's see, uh, a couple of weeks. <laughs> I oh, think. so it's new. Yeah, we just okay. uh, signed a contract. Uh, Very good. What, like two, a couple weeks ago. Weeks ago? Yeah. Well, now that the library is independent, uh, they have to, they have to right, reach right. out to, yeah, to yeah. get those jobs done. So really, uh, Barbara's, when they're part of the town, Barbara's doing uh, that already. Mm -hmm. um, so she has a, a you know, you know uh, not, so that's good. Uh, interest in earnings, 45000 um, We did almost $90,000 in interest between the three funds this year. Um, the interest rate on average, um, probably the same and a little bit higher. Um, so I calculated that out to about 45. Rental property as a cell tower, um, you have a fixed amount with a 4% increase every year for that cell tower. And, uh, so that is, that should be how much we get. Uh, Tully building is a rent on this property for the apartments upstairs and out back. Uh, I've been increasing the rent every year uh, to get it up closer to um, market value, which we are um, a good amount under market value, so we'll just keep on increasing it. Um, although the way the market's going, um, I don't feel it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard to catch it without, uh, but we'll just keep on increasing, and, and, uh, but we want to keep it fairly affordable also. Uh, license and permits, uh, I left 1500 in there. Um, that really just depends on what kind of uh, building projects people are doing and how much we make. So I don't want to increase it uh, too much. Uh, it all depends on what uh, people are doing with the uh, building permits. <coughs> Sales of equipment. Um, this year we, were, we plan on replacing three pieces of, of equipment. Uh, we have um, 
two zero trim mowers, two Bobcats skid steers, and two RTVs. And um, we replace them uh, every other year. So those three um, pieces will be replaced and then next year uh, the, uh, the opposite uh, pieces will be replaced. So uh, projected sale is 65000 and then you'll see uh, for the budget appropriation for the purchase of the new. Um, and I've mentioned this before, but the reason that we turn them over so uh, quickly, um, because we get, get, at, get them at uh, government price, which is uh, almost at cost. So um, you know, we, we don't have to worry about the cost of repairs and upkeep. Um, and then we go to sell them. Uh, they just, they're you know, always in good condition and sell well. So it's um, close to a wash um, from purchasing them to sell them, or maybe a thousand or two that uh, get the pack. Unclassified revenue. <coughs> Every year there's some uh, funds that might come in that we weren't expecting uh, or don't know where to put it. And that goes under classified revenue. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see the 2022-2023 actuals are uh, was quite high, and that was the voluntary distribution that the county gave us. That uh, they were kind enough to add. Was that for the sales tax? Yeah. Where they mm -hmm. collected more than they anticipated, so they. Yeah. Uh, do you have uh, budgets? No. Oh, there's, they're back there. Yeah, they're through, if, you okay, to, sorry. if you wanted to. <coughs> you don't have to. Just, you know, if you wanted to follow along. No, it's know. fine. Yep. Uh, state per capita aid, that's uh, money that comes in from the uh, state. It's a state aid. Uh, state aid mortgage, mortgage tax. Uh, we get a percentage of uh, when, a, when a house sells and there's a uh, mortgage tax. We get a per percentage of that tax, um, and so I left it at four thousand. It was a little higher um, last fiscal year, but it really just all depends on houses selling. So you know, if more houses sell or, or for higher prices, we may get more. Um, but I'd rather budget a little low right there. Uh, the ships program that is uh, what the state gives us for uh, roads. Have four thousand rollover from last fiscal year, or the current fiscal year. So that's that amount. The youth programs of three thousand one fifty. Uh, that is what we put into this uh, county for the summer rec program. So that is what we're projecting to get from that. <coughs> um, I just want to uh, mention any the the anything that ends with PS stands for personal services, and that's a line that somebody that we get paid out of. Um, and for everybody except for me, I'm salary, everybody else is hourly. Um, so if there's a change in purpose, personal services line, it's just really uh, a, uh, an allocation of hours or um, rates. Um, so the other thing to mention is you'll see in some of them, and especially in sewer, um, a larger change because as Joe and I uh, went over the budget, uh, Joe noticed that um, Chris had a significant amount of hours. Chris, who's our sewer um, operator, had a, uh, a lot of hours in the general fund, and um, which needed to be, and he doesn't really, uh, and that it's kind of a remnant from when he did more work in the general fund, uh, snow pond, and whatnot. So, um, we got reallocated, that we allocated those hours to be more in line with what's uh, truly happening. So um, that helped the general fund uh, a bit, and it hurt the uh, sewer fund a bit, and the sewer fund really uh, isn't another place to handle um, that, but uh, so we'll get to that in a minute. So personal services, just an all allocation. Of, uh, so the village board, that's your pay, Contractual, uh, there's a contractual, and um, any contractuals for uh, us are is for training and different um, expenses that might occur. Uh, it's your contractual. Got the mayor's uh, 
pay, mayor's contractual, clerk, treasurer, P, uh, that's my pay, my contractual, auditor. Um, I, I talked uh, previously about this. I'd like to uh, have somebody come in and kind of look over the books and have that audited a little time. Um, so I add, that's uh, one of the changes I made. That's good. Uh, I added the 5,000 to there. Audit services, um, so I mean, basically the same thing, but I left that blank. Uh, Deputy Treasurer is Renee's pay, uh, her contractual. Um, Deputy Clerk is uh, Barb's and uh, her contractual. Uh, Barb and Renee both have been paid exactly the same. And to see um, contractuals, we, we're not using them too much. Uh, we used to go to NICOM quite a bit, but um, we haven't had a little bit of time. Uh, we have been going to uh, NICOM events, but that's uh, through the uh, electric budget. <coughs> attorney, uh, we haven't really used a lot of attorney, but uh, we never know what might come up where we'll need it. Um, so it's appropriate to keep money there. Engineering, um, same. It's reduced to a thousand. Most times you we use an engineer, it's associated with a project, um, and you don't. Uh, it's, in, it, it's included in that funding, but again, it's just a good idea to leave something there. Elections um, in the that in this fiscal in the 24-25 fiscal year, there's no scheduled elections. Uh, public works, uh, we do not have a DBW supervisor, um, so that is uh, also. Zero. Uh, buildings, that is uh, personal services is for taking care of the different properties of the village, except the Sage, which has a separate line. Um, the equipment line, uh, I only usually put anything under uh, equipment and any line. If it's $5,000 or more, that is what uh, was suggested to me by uh, our accountant. Uh, Buildings, contractual, um, that is for different expenses that uh, to operate the buildings. Uh, central garage. Yeah, that's for uh, the, the DVW for the Quonset and the different uh, up there for uh, work that they do when they're up there. Uh, maybe they're you know, fixing equipment or uh, working on the shop, that's where that falls under. Central garage equipment, that is um, that is where the three pieces of equipment that I discussed earlier um, will be coming out of. Central garage contractual, um, fuel, oil, parts, the utilities for the building, uh, their clothing allowance comes out of that. Central Communications, uh, I have nothing under equipment. Uh, Central uh, Central Communications contractual, um, that's the general funds portion of things like the copiers, the telephones, the internet, the cell phones and cell phone stipends, and so on and so forth. Uh, Central Storeroom for envelopes and stamps and uh, mailing and paper, things like that. Data processing, uh, computer software, uh, the website, billing software, uh, credit card fees, uh, and the uh, portion of the uh, folding machine. Yeah, but if there's any questions or if I'm going too fast, uh, just holler. Um, <coughs> insurance, that's the uh, general funds portion of the overall insurance policy. Missile dues, uh, we belong to some di different organizations. But, uh, so that goes. Uh, taxes and assessment, uh, this building, uh, we pay taxes on, taxes on the portion of this building that we do not use for government. So all of the um, apartments we pay tax on. And, and the business back there. Contingency account, uh, that's the just in case money. Um, and 
it's always an odd, weird number because that's how what the number that I use to balance the budget to make it zero. Uh, equipment fund. Uh, we decided last year to start putting money aside for equipment. My idea is to build up the fund in the uh, equipment fund, so eventually there's enough money in there where we can take money out of the equipment fund um, and keep the um, budget as uh, steady year to year as possible. Um, so uh, years ago, uh, anytime we need a new piece of equipment, the uh, that line would go way up, and then we have to cut like street maintenance way down. You know, and, and um, I just rather keep it nice and uh, uh, steady, so we can count on the funds, and uh, we have street maintenance getting done properly and equipment being done properly. So we keep on adding money to the, that fund at some point. Um, hopefully, in the next couple of years, there'll be enough in there where we can start uh, buying equipment out of that fund. Public safety, that is mostly the cost of the street lights in the village. And as Joe pointed out, um, there, the way we calculate that is there's in our, in our tariff and there's a, a, a the power authority, the Public Service Commission. Who, who public, yeah, public, public Service, Service Commission. They, they tell us what we can uh, charge for street lights, but it's, the calculation is very, very, very old. So they're, they're still basing it off of old sodium phosphate lights. I purchased sodium. And uh, now we're on LED lights. So that way to change it is a rate increase. So uh, we'd like to get to that point where, um, hey, so we'd like to see that go down, uh, but we just have to have, you know, they have to come out with that information. So right now we're charging what they're, they're telling us to charge, um, but uh, hopefully someday they'll come out with the LED rate. Uh, police and constable, that is what we pay the sheriffs out of for additional uh, patrols. 2022-23, um, uh, they really didn't do a lot of patrols. They were down on um, deputies, deputies um, so they didn't really have but they, they've assured us that um, that should be increasing and they've gotten new and, uh, and hired more people. So that should hopefully uh, get used. Fire department, personal services, we used to have um, an employee who was a fireman and when they went to uh, calls, that's where their uh, pay would come out of. Um, and Barb is an EMT, so she's welcome to go on calls. So if she came out, um, if she did that, that would she uh, get money in that line. <coughs> fire protection, that's, it's, that's what we pay the fire department every year. Safety inspection, that is uh, the code officer's, a third of his pay, and then his contractual his contractual is used because he has to keep up a certain amount of hours of training, so he does online training and in-person training. Uh, street maintenance, per, uh, personal services, uh, obviously taking care of our roads. Uh, the contractual part, uh, we can always use more money in uh, street maintenance, so uh, we increase that to seventy thousand from up from ten uh, up ten thousand from last year. Snow removal, uh, obviously from, from snow, snow contractual, uh, salt, shoes, rubber, uh, all those things. Not, not uh, snowshoes, but uh, shoes for the plow, uh, rubber for the plow, all that. Sidewalks, personal services, uh, we don't do a lot of sidewalk work ourselves, uh, but there's things that uh, we need to do so that that was allocated there. Uh, we kept $20,000 in the budget again for sidewalks. Um, that's another one of those things I'd like to keep constant uh, and be able to keep up on our sidewalks because we have really good sidewalks now. Um, and just to keep those up, and we have a lot of people walking, so we just want to make sure we stay ahead of that and always have uh, good sidewalks. We have plenty that have cracks and need to be replaced, and uh, it, it's, it's not cheap to replace 
side block. So that is there. Um, park project fund. Uh, have had a budget in there. Sage personal service. It's contractual. That's uh, what we pay the guys to um, clean and uh, keep up the sage and uh, contractual for cleaning supplies and uh, paint and things like that. Uh, library fund. Um, uh, so that there's nothing in it. Uh, this year we were giving them 1500 previously. Um, yeah, the uh, was 1500 I, I got a copy of their uh, budget also. They didn't even include uh, anything for the village uh, in their budget. I think it had to do with, because I believe we went from 28 cents per thousand, and when it got passed here, it went to 55 cents. So it was already a, a raise for all the homeowners uh, to pay into it. So I think that's why they left it right out of theirs, and that's why I left it out of ours. Because um, we're already, you know, it's already uh, 27 cents, I believe, per thousand. Now I add on to all the homeowners in the village. So. Youth programs, as is our uh, summer rec program. Uh, last year we didn't break 4,000, so I decreased that. Uh, the, uh, we project that just the uh, salaries for the, um, two, the, the, the it's 3,150, um, so that'll be plenty, that's at least plenty of money for trips and um, supplies. So we have plenty of 5,000. Their uh, historian, that's our historian's pay, contractual celebrations uh, that in, uh, is for any Christmas um, like, uh, tree, like Saturday, trunk or tree, the, the park festival, pay, uh, the pay for those things, and, and the, uh, any sort of items we need to um, purchase for that. Nothing, we haven't had anything on adult recreation for a while. That money was going to uh, um, Gilp Grant, uh, Tree Board. We have money on the Tree Board, uh, the Tree Board uh, Park Committee uh, for uh, them to have some funds if necessary. Uh, zoning, personal services, that is a s other second third of Gary's uh, pay, the code officer, and the planning. Yes, personal services is also the, uh, the last third of his pay. Planning contractual, uh, I decreased that uh, pair to 2,000. Grant writer, we haven't had a grant writer or needed a grant writer in a while. So that's uh, the zoning law update that, uh, that was completed. Storm sewers, that is related to um, updating and replacing uh, or fixing uh, storm sewers. Uh, every year they go around and identify places where there's issues and clean them out and fix, fix them. I want to get back to cleaning a third a year. We put a couple new ones in there last year, so it was a little higher. Uh, brush pickup personal services, that's for Obviously, for the guys to go around and pick up brushes, uh, brush piles every Monday. The refuse contract that is the second, that's the offset of um, garbage pickup. So that will, uh, we don't, I, that, I don't, I, I didn't do anything with that number until we get the bids. But I think it won't affect the budget because it'll be, it'll even out and be a pass through. Community beautification, um, that's for um, flowers and trees and, and uh, watering and everything we, we do for keeping the village beautiful. Drainage, uh, shade trees, uh, you know, take care of the trees, pruning. We have uh, the lineman prune trees every year. 
crews coming in from different places to help. Contractual, we've added a little bit of contractual to uh, add to our tree inventory this year. Uh, then you have the employee benefits, uh, all these, you know, state retirement. That's what the, you know, uh, the village is part of contributing to retirement. Social Security, village to share, workers' comp, disability insurance, um, health insurance. Um, now, paid time off, um, I, just a reminder. Um, so, I budget for zero for paid time off because throughout the rest of the budget, um, everybody is paid for 2,080 hours. So, I, I budget for it in, the, in there. Um, but obviously, um, there's sick time and hot, uh, sick time and, and, and vacation time and, and um, personal time, and I can't uh, guess what everybody's going to take and what they're not going to take. Uh, so I budget for all those hours in, during the budget, and then um, you'll see uh, when they take take that take time off, it goes into this line and it gets overdrawn. But that's okay because it's not being taken out of the other lines in the budget. So. All items out in the end. Uh, sick payout: uh, the village pays uh, employees who do not receive uh, health insurance benefits. Um, and by opting out, uh, they get uh, paid for that. So that's that line. Uh, health insurance payout. That's right. Uh, uh, sick payout. Sick payout is when um, so uh, the employees who cannot accumulate uh, sick time. Uh, it, it gets paid out to them. You don't, you, know, you don't take whatever sick time you don't take. It, it gets paid out there. Uh, and that saves a village because if um, somebody starts off in a, as an employee and getting $15 an hour and then it's with a village 30 years and they're making uh, a lot, lot more, they get paid out at a higher rate. Mm -hmm. So by uh, paying employees at the end of the year, uh, it keeps that liability off the books. So it saves the money down the road. And then there's health insurance buyout, which is what I mentioned earlier. And then there's probably the sweetest thing in this whole budget is the debt service lines, zero. You have no debt at all in the general fund. All in all, uh, the general fund's in, in great shape. Um, we have a very healthy uh, fund balance, um, and that's that information in the current, because uh, the Barb closed out the fiscal year, and when she closed out the fiscal year, then she can, uh, that she, before that she can't issue reports for the current year. So the financial information I gave you tonight, um, because she closed out the year, I can uh, give those to you now. Otherwise, they, they would so uh, we can see that yeah, we have a healthy fund balance, um, and uh, so uh, the general fund is in very good shape. Can I ask a real quick question? What, what yep. fell off from the debt that we had? Uh, um, it, yep, that was the, uh, the uh, dump truck. The, oh, okay. We bought the Western Star plow truck. That was the last yeah. thing that uh, we had. So um, and really, knock on wood, but I don't see anything on the, the horizon that we're, we're, we need uh, to uh, take that out for. Things get a little bit. Uh, the sewer fund. Um, the fun thing about the sewer fund is that we only have so many sewer tanks. Uh, we don't have. There's really no growth. There. Property taxes. We have you know, property taxes to build houses, uh, come more viable. They might have a have an opportunity for more houses. Sewer, um, unless there's a lot of houses to be built, um, it's pretty flat. Sewer went uh, at about 40, I've been 
budgeting $400,000 for sewer that's I think for 10 years. Um, so it, it's very flat, but at the same time, uh, all expenses go And that plant, the way it is, there's always problems, there's always things that need to be fixed. Very thick old plant. I believe there's one, one other one in the whole state like this plant. Yeah, I mean, that's it's pretty well. Green water plant with the membranes. Uh, so uh, sewer ramps for a hundred thousand. Uh, we will see a few more things come online. Charge for uh, penalties on sewer accounts. That, you know, there's plenty of penalties. We get uh, this amount of money in penalties and not paying. Um, for some reason, sewers are, are revenable, so if you don't pay your sewer bill, you can't turn your sewer off. So uh, it's put on your taxes. Okay. Uh, so the county reimburses us for that. It makes us whole. But um, I don't understand why, you know, I, why there's lots, lots of people who don't pay their sewer bill let it go on with their taxes, but it's like the, the amount of fees that they rack up by doing that is the same. They, they, they just cost themselves so, so much more. Uh, sewer service, uh, that is what the school pays us for taking their flows, and that is a calculation uh, that is developed. So it's based off of our appropriations, core appropriations minus uh, the 2,500 take the initial plan that they already paid for, so they paid for it, uh, and the percentage of that. So it's 22,378. Interest earning, uh, interest way up because of my class. They don't have a lot of money in care, unfortunately, so uh, one good thing with uh, sewer, um, there is a reserve of $160,000 and now it's climbing decently because of uh, interest we're getting in that class. Uh, so that money is set aside specifically for banks and uh, lines. Rental property, uh, the fields there, we went to a farmer for $1,000 a year. No projected sales of equipment. Unclassified revenue, uh, it was higher in 22, 23 because of uh, 
somebody can uh, put in a new tank, a new service, they have to pay uh, that charge. So they can tie into our system. Association dues, you know, we're part of some uh, um, different organizations, and we also put the training uh, under there. That the reason why it's so high uh, the previous fiscal year is because we sent here to school, um, and that's uh, where that was uh, placed. Um, and also, uh, Chris goes to uh, has to keep up a certain amount of hours every year for training. Uh, contingency account that went way down um, and that was a um, part of how we balanced it out from the reallocation of Chris's hours and uh, with Eric's addition and I also had to wipe out the equipment fund to make that work. Uh, and sanitary sewer Personal, personal service contractual, uh, a great deal of that is for, um, cost of that is for uh, pumping and taking care of tanks. Um, so I did increase the sanitary sewer contractual of 40,000, um, just as a projection of what I think we'll be at um, after the, um, the bids come in. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I'm close. Uh, Treatment disposal, uh, sewer treatment equipment, nothing under there. Um, treatment disposal, that's all um, plant, um, uh, working the plant. Working at the plant, uh, yeah, you can see the treatment and disposal contractual is very, very high. Um, I mean, we're paying $2,000 to $3,000 a month there just for electricity. Um, then you throw on the chemicals and uh, everything goes wrong and uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a lot. Um, then you get a, a down to employee benefits, state retirement, uh, so this is all those things are the, um, the sewers contribution and percentages of um, those things. And the way, I don't do a third, a third, a third because I don't think that's fair. Um, so I uh, developed you know, uh, so what I do is uh, I do a five-year average of where each person puts in their time, right? So all the, uh, everybody, myself is salary, so that's a fixed percentage. The, 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 uh, Barbara and Renee, uh, they're hourly, but they, they don't have any overtime, and, and so they basically they broke down in a percentage. Uh, and then the guys, depending on where they work, um, figure out uh, what percentage of their time uh, for the whole year, um, and then we do the average. Um, so I take everybody's average, and then I add those up and do the average, and based off <coughs> that, um, say, uh, that's how we come up with how we divide um, these things up. So um, electric pays the most because uh, we've got the two uh, linemen who are almost exclusively out of electric, Barbara and Renee is both 70% out of electric, and I'm 50. Um, so just based on the, uh, the way I do that, uh, electric pays most, then general, and then sewer. So it's not exactly uh, divided in the third, because I don't mix 
that I did. I don't see that being appropriate. But it's based on uh, employees, where they worked, and uh, percentage of the, the average of where the, the, all the employees work. Um, uh, debt service um, is another black cloud over the sewer. Um, we have a lot of debt in the sewer. Um, the original, the original plan, I say original for me, it's been online for 13 years now. Um, it had just started when I, um, it just uh, went online when I, I started working here. And, um, so that's a 30 year, uh, at 82,500 a year. Um, we got it through EFC and there is no interest, which is great, but uh, we're with that for a long time. Um, and then there was a, another debt. Um, yeah, there's, there's, right now there's three, uh, two long terms, and uh, the third one is the ban um, for the current work that's up there. Um, and that's coming to a close, so within uh, probably the next fiscal year, 25, 26, we will take that up for long term financing, and then we'll be uh, fixing out two ones. And we'll see where that comes in for. Right now, it's just a new, it's a band in the world over every year. And unfortunately, by the time we're done paying that off for the 30 year period, it'll be time to put a new facility in because that's about as long as they last. Mm -hmm. So it's just time going. Any questions on the sewer? Electric budget, uh, we're back to a little bit of uh, happiness here, I guess. Um, the electric budget has been doing very well in the last five years. Um, we also dropped off a lot of budget, a lot of uh, a debt um, here. Um, we paid off the bucket truck, um, so but we, I, uh, the debt in here because I April will be receiving the, uh, the Digger Derrick. Um, probably going to finance that for 10 years. And then down the road, we'll have um, the debt for the substation. So, revenue uh, has been doing good. Um, residential uh, electric is a little bit up, but I didn't want to change it. Um, that'll fluctuate depending on the weather and the uh, hot in the summer and it's a lot of AC than the usage, but if it's uh, uh, relatively mild summer and mild winter, um, that, could, that could drop. Same thing with um, residential, rural. Uh, they're more steady. Um, commercial village, um, commercial accounts in the village, those are uh, usually fairly steady, so we keep those there. Commercial rural has definitely been increasing because of the uh, industrial park, um, and that could really go much, much higher with the uh, some possible um, developments going on up there. Uh, if, whether we, I don't know if, if we're going to classify um, if Oxbow goes up there, if they're going to be an industrial customer. Yes. So that'll be under a different spot, but uh, they're talking about building more uh, buildings up there. If we get, uh, if we talk about the, uh, the Quickly's uh, gas station, uh, if that goes in as well, uh, that will increase. But um, even just with the stuff that's up there right now, um, Liberty is always increasing. Um, the craft cannery has been increase, increasing uh, their uh, usage and expanding. Um, so we'll continue to see uh, commercial rural increase. So I increased it uh, a little bit, but I didn't want to get carried away better to be a little uh, on a uh, slight side uh, revenue. Industrial, uh, that's uh, Norterra. They had a phenomenal year the last couple years, um, so I increased it, but I didn't, again, I, I don't want to go too much because um, 
there's been years where um, the weather's been really, really bad, and they've had, 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 had the produce come in, and they really hurt our budget. They're not running. That's an interesting, you know, what are they, 70% of our usage? Yeah. So if they drop the amount of usage there, um, then it, it affects its budget quite a lot. Uh, municipal accounts, uh, that's for all our buildings. Municipal revenue, um, it was higher previously because of, um, they, we, they, uh, there was a um, miscoding of interest and um, we had some money come through for full agreements and full attachments. Interest is way up, obviously, um, they left had a decent amount of money in night class, so if that uh, electric purchases, um, you know, the more we, more people, more we use, more we can buy. That's why I increased that a little bit, um, based on uh, increasing usage. Uh, racks and zacks, that's kind of a hard one to um, project, but uh, racks are renewable energy credits. Um, that's funding that we, everybody has to pay into to fund uh, the states. Uh, energy efficiency uh, policies and uh, Zach's is uh, zero emission credit, is that right? Yes. Uh, I, there's too many acronyms for me to remember yeah. sometimes, but uh, uh, zero emissions credits, that money is uh, everybody pays, not just us, but every electric in the state, and that money goes towards keeping the uh, nuclear power plants so they get that money. They said they can't compete with the gas fire and generation facilities, so they basically they're subsidized and keep them going because we need the reliability. Mm -hmm. So you have to subsidize them and keep them afloat. But like Courtney said, every rate payer in the state pays it, doesn't matter if you're national grid, RG, all municipal, everybody pays it. Any any rate, any customer. Uh, in the state pays it, so they're going to keep going up. Year by year, those RECs and ZECs are going to be going up. NYSERDA collects all this money from the RECs, which we all pay into, and they uh, they distribute it out to contractors so they can put up the solar fields and the windmills, and uh, they're finding that they're not collecting enough money and that the contractors want more money for the labor and the materials. So now the state is going to start charging all the customers more so they can keep it going. And we, we just got a, a thing yeah. from the uh, NIMPA saying that the rates are going to be going up because of this. In, our, in the next, in the January bill, it started. So, so yeah. State of New York. We, we've put out letters in the, in the, the electric bills and we've put out the information in the newsletters a number of times, but um, the Rex and Zacks are just going to continue going up, and there's the, the um, MUA gives projections of what it looks like, and it, it's pretty ugly. Um, it, it's more and more of these projects ramp up. Um, they do, sorry, if they do the offshore uh, windmills, all the solar pro projects, um, just pay more and more and more, and the rates will go up and up, and on top of that, that power is more expensive, and if they can shut down the, the gas plant, so the electric, the, the electric rates on its own, based on um, availability, and, uh, is the rates are going to go on their own, and then you throw in direct and sacks. And the majority of this is from down the state, which we we don't benefit at all by. We got to pay it all, yeah. and they get the benefit of it. Long Island, totally done that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, all that power from the. There never was a line item. Now there is. It's really the difference. When we shut the coal fired plants down a few years ago. They went up in Niagara County. Yeah, they're all gone. Yeah, it was the last time I've seen a coal train. 
Paul, did you notice the 18A assessment still in the bills? No. Yeah. They're still collecting that 18A assessment. That was supposed to sunset oh, 10, yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah. The state, well, we're going to keep that going. Yeah. It's, this is only for three years, they said. At some point, don't they realize some of this stuff is just behind the sky is and isn't worth what they're paying for? I mean, who really wants a solar farm producing for energy in New York State? It's yeah, we've had a few weeks here that are, uh, you know, they're doing okay, but, you know, when it's cloudy and it's, they're, they're right down almost nothing. Mm -hmm. But you still got to pay the debt on it. Yeah. What's the life expectancy 20 years on if you can't solar field? Yeah. Yeah, so then what? Add more. Another line. Crazy. Um, so with the electric budget, uh, there's a lot of lines that are budgeted for uh, that may get used or may not get used depending on where the need arises. So uh, you can see where uh, some lines uh, aren't used at all and then other lines are way over because a lot of work had to be done in that area. And, uh, so so a, a lot of this is, a, with the uh, electric budget, is a estimate of uh, where things might be needed. Um, but again, uh, in the end, uh, there was a budget for 2,080 hours. Um, so it'll move around uh, as a matter of materials and um, uh, depreciation, I did not uh, change depreciation this year. I wanted to keep it uh, uh, the same, uh, just because it's, it's too complex to really budget for it. Um, so, I think the depreciation changes up through the entire year, depending on uh, what we use, what we buy. Um, so, it, and, and it's really just too complex. So. I just want to keep that amount in there. So uh, next year it'll be, I'll just put in last year's actual, which will be about as close as you can rather than me making a, a projection of where we're gonna be. Um, supervision, that's the DPW uh, supervisor. Uh, we don't have engineering. We left, a, we put a lot in there for engineering because um, of substation uh, wasn't really used very much last year um, but you know uh, it might get rolled into the, uh, the project but uh, we have the money in there uh, to pay for it uh, pay for some anyway uh, and these uh, these next ones uh, probably Joe's better uh, at if you want to explain what each one of those mean but uh, I'll just work on um, different parts of the electric infrastructure. What are you talking? What's that? You're talking about the 300s? Uh, no, I'm at, uh, at the first page on the uh, distribution yeah. expenses. You get the next uh, you know, a bunch of uh, these, these here and these here. Um, you know, just, uh, well, it, most of it is it's what Courtney previously said that. These are a lot of what ifs, what if accounts. Uh, if we don't have a crystal ball in front of us. To see if we're going to have a storm and what's going to happen. And uh, you know, I, we don't know if the batteries are going to fail in a substation control house. Um, All the 700 accounts, the second column are contingency repairs. It's you know, they're expense yeah. accounts. And then falls on a wire. That's you, know, you, you can't plan for that, but that's where you pay for that. The three hundreds are your planned improvements to the system. That, that's an easy way to look at. Yeah. Um, we go to let's see, uh, middle of the second page, um, consumer accounts, the customer billing. That is Renee's pay. Uh, mayor, and contract, mayor and trustee, that's uh, the, uh, uh, your pay. Uh, 
clerk treasurer's my pay executive department is kind of com a combined contractual for everybody uh, treasurer uh, account that's uh, bar law department uh, the attorney uh, general office expense um, years ago the, the electric budget had twice as many uh, account numbers um, and just as in the I just felt like we didn't need them all um, because when it comes to doing the public service commission report and the, uh, in, you know, the it used to be the AUD but now it's the AFR you know financial report um, they don't require those uh, so we just put a bunch of things together under general office expense so they are uh, basically just what it says everything that needs to be uh, general office expense, including uh, utilities and the general's, the, the, the electric funds portion of the phone, the, tele, the, the computers, the software, and all that stuff. Um, and the uh, clothing allotment, uh, training, uh, it's all in there. Uh, insurance, that's uh, the uh, electric parts of insurance. Regulatory commission is the at &E assessment we just talked about that we're supposed to only three years. Um, Prayers general property, signification buyouts is all together um, under one line here. And then you have New York State Retirement, uh, Workers' Comp, you know, uh, training and education. Uh, that one is more here because uh, we'll uh, send them to uh, school. We could probably decrease that a little bit uh, based off of uh, how many times you're going to school this year, but um, if something comes up and we have more training, then that would be to send to. Uh, again, I'm not changing the depreciation in our general property. Uncollectible revenues is the, the revenues that uh, um, we have to write off that we can't collect. Um, people don't pay us. Interest on long-term debt, personal payment on debt. So that is uh, why I changed that. Ten thousand? What do you got? Yeah. So I changed it. it mine is a little different. Um, I, I changed it since I printed mine out, but uh, mine are the last year's actuals. But yours is to what ten thousand for mm -hmm. interest and fifty thousand for uh, principal. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I'm projecting for the new. There was a question, uh, we leased the, uh, when, you, when you lease something through, uh, for the, in a government sense, you're not leasing it like you're leasing a car when you give it back at the end of the, the, the time period when you're leasing it, it's, it's government here. You, you just, uh, it's, a, it's a workaround uh, uh, because we're not allowed to borrow like a regular car loan type of thing. So there's municipal leasing which allows us to go out and buy something without going through the whole bonding process. Um, so that's what we did previously for the, for this, uh, for the bucket truck and dump truck. Um, but this time, uh, talking to our uh, municipal solutions, it might be better all around if we did a bond anyway, uh, based on the rates. So we, uh, so I'll keep you posted on that. Pilot, you know, that, that's what it's, it's the other side of what we give the uh, general uh, for our tariff. And then the fixed assets budget and work orders, uh, if we want to jump down to the bottom to the 300 accounts, that's where that, that is plugged into the budget. And the 300 accounts is uh, every year I talk to the linemen and give them a budget of 150000 to do. Uh, work and different things um, for that and um, so they plan um, LST or, uh, structures uh, 
Uh, they'd like to blacktop the driveway, but that's contingent on us getting Lease, the lease for that uh, property. Uh, we're not going to do it unless we get it. Uh, structures um, done to uh, poles, um, some five poles they want to change out and do some uh, the uh, conduit in the Creek Park. Um, big project that I'd like to see get in is the boring under 33. So we have a a line under 33 into the industrial park. We, we have a line there now. It's We only have one one way into that park right now, down Buffalo Road. And I, I was part of pulling those lines in there, and there were so many 45s in that line. It was, it was a real struggle getting them cables in there. If that should fail, those cables should fail, the parks were going to be in trouble with the park. Uh, as as so where would you bring those in in accordance to where the ones are now? Oh, they bore right near the same right general, the general area. area. Yeah. So uh, it's important that we get the that ductwork in there underneath there so that uh, we can get new lines under there, being very proactive mm -hmm. for that, reliability. That, that I'm sure would probably aid in Oxbow's construction too as well, right? Having a new. Oh yeah. Uh, well, when we get the higher voltage too, when we get to 12470 here, the voltage will be able to feed the whole park both ways. So, say if a car took a pole down here on Lake, I mean, we could shut that down and back feed up Buffalo Road mm -hmm. and feed the whole park. Uh, with our limits now, we're, we've got it split because of the load, we don't have enough capacity. So, we had to split the load up there, so now you got to feed each way. So if you lose one, you can't pick up the other load because there's just too much mm -hmm. load for the conductors. So it's it's vital that we have a very reliable source up there in that uh, conduit under the road will give us that. So I would sleep better nights knowing that it was in there. Have you got pros, uh, pricing on directional building now? What was it for you, 37000 Oh, wow. That's yeah, approximately. Yeah. I don't know if he's got a solid number yet, but that's where he thinks it's I think that was to put two two conduits in. How big? Uh, probably six inch. I would think six. You got to be able to get three 15 kV cables through there. Six or eight inch, maybe eight inch. I don't know if it says. Does it say on there? No. The size of the conduits. But uh, like I said, I was there when we pulled them in, and it was lifting the Deirdre Derrick right off the ground. It was a cap stand. Mm -hmm. We were pulling it, it was lifting the leg. It was, it was a hard pull. So it could be nice for reliability to have it in there. You know, you always try to back up your system. If something goes down, you, you, know, you want to have an option. Said it, I, my goal all these years was to make the budget uh, as consistent as possible and um, fine tuning it every year, making sure we're in a good financial spot. But uh, yeah. Okay, so you can see these all say draft on them. So mm -hmm. you have to take these home with you, flip them all over. If you have any questions, bring them back to the next meeting. Courtney, when do you we have to have a hearing for this? Um, usually, we do it the first meeting in April. Okay. Or the D meeting in April. Yeah. Okay. So, so they buy in here, I don't want to take it if it's if it's something that we shouldn't shouldn't leave there. No, you can have that. Oh, yeah, okay. it's, 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 it marked draft, so. Okay. Yep. Welcome to it. So, you know, look them over, and then. Uh, Make some notes, maybe put questions, and uh, we'll go over at the next meeting. Yeah, nice job, Gordon. Okay, the next thing I got is uh, 
union contract, and I would ask for a motion to go into an executive session. Um, go ahead. I'll make a motion for going into executive session. Okay. Is there a second? Yes, sir. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you, gents. Thank you, Bob. Have a good night. Yep, you too.